<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and here we're going to be looking at something that will give a little more life to your Switch here in terms of usability and functionality. Something that's actually been around for a while, but was pointed out to me again and is pretty cool to see. We're going to be taking a look at Mission Control on the Switch, which this is a background process that you can install on your Atmosphere custom firmware modified Switch. And it essentially allows you to sync up a lot more controllers to your Switch. You don't need to use an adapter, you don't need to use a USB cable, in fact you can't since it is Bluetooth only, but it allows you to use other Bluetooth controllers on the Switch. So if you want to use a PS3, PS4, or even a PS5 controller, or many other Bluetooth controllers out there, you're able to do that with Mission Control, which is really awesome to see. So for this, we need a few prerequisites. We are going to need a custom firmware modified Switch running the latest version of the Atmosphere custom firmware. You're going to need the basics of how to navigate it, and we're also going to need our Bluetooth controller that we want to sync up on here. For this example, I'm going to be using a DualSense PS5 controller, and we are going to need a way to transfer files to and from the console. For this here, I like to go a little bit old school, but I am just going to do the good old fashioned method of turning off my console, unplugging the micro SD card, and popping it into my PC, because we are going to need a PC to transfer some files over to our console. The link for this is going to be down below in the description, but it is over on GitHub, and as you can see here, this here is Mission Control itself. Use controllers from other consoles natively on your Nintendo Switch via Bluetooth, no dongles or other external hardware necessary. The features it has are that it supports all firmware versions, you can connect up to 8 non-switch Bluetooth controllers, it makes full native use of Horizon OS itself, so you can use button remapping and such, it has support for rumble and motion controls as long as the compatible controllers have them, low input lag, and more. Now this is where it's important, it shows a list of currently supported controllers, and if you are wanting to submit a controller request, you can put that in right here. However, you can see here that there's a whole lot that you can add in, such as the Wii Remote and Extensions, the Wii Balance Board, the Wii U Pro Controller, the DualShock 3, 4, the DualSense, the DualSense Edge. With the Xbox controllers, it is worth noting there's some discrepancies here. The Xbox One controllers will work, but not the series controllers, unfortunately. And the older Xbox One controllers will also not work because those ones are not Bluetooth. So you essentially need to find a happy middle ground there using the Xbox One controllers. However, they have a large list right here, and there's a lot more information available on this. So I would recommend giving this a read if you want to, but if you're wanting a bit of a quick setup here, you can go ahead and continue on with this video. So for this, you can scroll up to the top, go over to releases, go down to the latest release here, and download the latest zip file and save it somewhere you can easily find it. It looks like also there is currently some testing for Bluetooth LE support, so that means that mention I made of the Xbox Series controllers not working, well, they might in the future, we'll just have to keep an eye on this, but either way, once we have that downloaded, go ahead and find it and get it transferred over. Once you have Mission Control downloaded, it will just be in a zip file like this. You can right click this and extract it into its own folder. And it should look like this here when we open it up. There's just an atmosphere folder and a config folder. We'll go into the config later on, but just to get this up and running, you just need to copy these two folders, highlight, right click, copy, X out of here, go into your Switch's micro SD card, and in the root of the micro SD card, right click and paste. And that's about all there is to it. At this point, it has been installed, so you just need to go back here, right click, eject your micro SD card, and insert it into your console. Now once you fire up your Switch and load up custom firmware, you'll notice that there's absolutely no change here. Uh, that's because there is no specific application, UI, or anything else. This really just integrates seamlessly into the system OS itself, which is really awesome. So what you'll need to do next is now synchronize any controllers that you want to. So for this here, like I said, I'm going to be using a DualSense controller, which is going to be for the PlayStation 5. Now the GitHub page has a whole wealth of information, and there is a section here about pairing controllers, which I would recommend reading up on, because not only pairing controllers on the Switch can be a little annoying, but every single controller is going to be a little different. There's kind of a catch-all for other controllers right here, where you have to look at the manual, but for some of the bigger ones, such as the DualShock 3, DualShock 4, DualSense, and the Xbox 
1 or Elite 2 controllers, they do cover these specific options here. So for this, since I'm going to be using the DualSense controller, I'm going to have to hold down the PS and Share buttons until the light bar starts blinking. To synchronize your controllers, for now, you will initially need standard controllers on the Switch, so either a Pro Controller, Joy-Cons, or just any type of stock controllers that work here. Go up to the controller section, tap A. Now we're going to load up change grip slash order, tap this, and here it's going to start looking for controllers. So this is where you're going to want to take your new controller such as a DualSense and get it into Bluetooth sync mode. That's what I'm going to do right here. So off screen, I'm holding down the PS and share buttons on my controller. It looks like it is blinking. And there we go, it was able to pick it up on here and it was able to pair it and as you can see it shows up on my system as a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. So this time around I'm actually going to tap the X button and I accidentally went into this option again here but the nice thing is if we fire this up I can just turn on the controller, start tapping the L and R buttons. And there we go, it works exactly like a Pro Controller, so I'm going to close out of this. Because I'm getting used to using a PlayStation Controller on the Switch, I keep getting into this option, but the nice thing is if you now just turn on the controller, there we go, it's able to synchronize. I can tap A, there we go, go here, well actually I'm going to be pressing circle, but as you can see at this point now, I'm actually able to use this controller just fine on the console itself. The only thing you will have to get used to is if you're using a PlayStation controller or if you're using a Xbox controller, you might be used to the button mappings on there by default for their respective systems. So you will have to get used to that on here, but it even works in game. So for example, I'm going to fire up Streets of Rage 4, which I was using in a prior video and it should work as intended here. So again, we can hit any button in here. I'll go into training because why not? Let's just try this here. But as you can see, it seems to be working as expected here, which is just a, another controller working on the Switch. So we are all good to go at this point, but when I'm doing this here, just all the basic buttons and stuff, it is mapped to the Switch buttons. But I am trying this out. It looks like Bluetooth is working fine, of course. It looks like Rumble functionality is working fine. So overall, this is working wonderfully and much better than expected. Now, do keep in mind there are some caveats here. Number one, this is going to be Bluetooth only, so you cannot hook this up to the Switch through USB and use it. Another thing is going to be when you put your Switch into sleep mode here, you will not be able to wake up the Switch using a non-Switch controller. So if you want to wake it up remotely, you are going to need to use a Pro Controller or your Joy-Cons. You cannot wake this up with the DualSense, for example, even if it has been synchronized. So that's all to say here, I just put my Switch into sleep mode, and if I turn on, I have to do that manually, and then I have to manually turn on the DualSense controller, let it synchronize, let's give it a bit. And there we go, it took a few taps here, but we were able to get it up and running and it is still working on here. Now, if you do want to do any further configuration, I'll show you how to do that. You will need to edit a file here and for this, you will need to go into your Switch's file system. Well, more specifically on the micro SD card. So I'm going to turn off my Switch and pop the micro SD card back into the computer. Over at your computer, if you want to modify the configuration at all, you can go into your micro SD card, go into the newly created config folder, mission control, and inside of here, there's going to be a mission control in a template, as well as any controllers that might be here. So for example, this here is my controller that has been synced up. This is the DualSense controller. However, in here, if you want to modify this, first of all, if you're using Windows, you will need to enable file name extensions. So you will need to go to view, show, and make sure you enable file name extensions. Now here, we'll need to take the mission control any dot template file, and we're going to truncate this, so we're going to get rid of the dot template at the end. If it asks you to change the file name extension, say yes. And from here, we can edit this. Usually, I'd recommend Notepad++, but if you don't have that, you can just use Notepad without issue. And in here, if you want to modify things further, you're more than welcome to. There are comments on each one. So for example, if you want to enable Rumble, you can just uncomment that by removing the semicolon in front of enable rumble. So enable rumble equals true means that vibration is enabled on the controllers. 
You can also enable motion controls if it is available. Although these are default to true, so if you want to disable vibration, for example, you can flip this value to false, or even this one you can flip to false, whatever you want to do on that, and just make sure you always go and save these changes. You can do Bluetooth overrides if you need to, but also there's a few other things like setting the DualShock 3 LED behavior. These ones I would say might be of more interest to some people, so for example, set the LED light bar brightness for DualShock 4 controllers, where you can change this here between 0 and 9. Uh, right here, since I'm using a DualSense, for example, if I wanted to bring this down a bit, I would go over to DualSense light bar brightness, go ahead, get rid of that, and actually let me add some spacing here just to make it a little more readable. There, that should make it a little more readable just for our comments and stuff, but on here, as you can see, the DualSense light bar brightness is by default set to 4, so if you want to make it a minimum or even turn it off, you can change that to 0 and save yourself a little more battery life there. It hopefully makes a little easier in dark rooms however if you want to turn up all the way you could also just change that to nine and then save that if you want to also the vibration intensity right here you can do the exact same thing this goes from one to eight so by default it runs at a four but if you want to uncomment this here and you want to make it the most intense possible you can change that to eight and that should work out just fine again for any settings you change you always just want to go to file and save However, if you are perfectly okay with how everything is, you don't even need to do this here. You should be perfectly fine. So if you don't want to mess with that at all, let's say you've messed with your settings and you just want to roll with the default, you can always just restore this template here. For this, I'm actually going to delete the mission control I and I, go back into the extracted one, config, mission control, grab the template, and paste it in there, just in case I ever want to use that again. Lastly, let's say you might be running into some issues on your Switch with this and you want to delete it, or for whatever reason you just don't like this here, well, it's easy enough to uninstall. For this, you want to go into your micro SD card, and there's going to be a few things we need to delete. Go into the atmosphere directory, go into contents, and you're going to look for this specific folder right here. It starts with 01, a series of zeros, and then the end is BD00. You're just going to want to delete this folder right here. The second folder we need to delete, we need to go back to the atmosphere folder, but go over to EXEFS patches and delete the Bluetooth patches folder. Next, we need to delete the BTM patches folder. And finally, we need to go back to the root of our micro SD card, go into config and delete mission control. And one final recommendation they have here for removal is also removing the Bluetooth pairing database. So keep in mind, any controllers you already have synced, you will have to resync to your console. But for this, you can go over to your system settings, navigate down to controllers and sensors. And inside of here, we're going to look for disconnect controllers, which will be at the bottom. Tap the A button and you will have to remove the console from the dock to proceed, so you will just have to resync your controllers here. So with all that done, any traces of mission control has been erased from the system, but I'll be honest, I'm actually going to reinstall it real quick because it's pretty cool and pretty awesome to have. So I do want third party controllers from other systems to work on my system here. So here we go, we are in a good spot. I have my controllers synced up and check this out. Even if I go over to the controllers and sensors, for example, I mean it's so native in here you can go over to the control sticks and even though this is designed for the switch I can totally calibrate the control sticks on a dual sense right here so everything is working as intended just like this is factory setup and factory settings right here which is super awesome to see so I do absolutely love this feature here that you can add into the switch and I hope you all do as well too again do not sleep on the github here not only there's some known issues some frequently asked questions but this is still in development and there's planned and in progress features right here including bluetooth le support usb wired controllers a companion application as well too a tesla overlay keyboard to mouse support GameCube mode so some really cool stuff seems to be in the pipeline for mission control something that is still in development and something that is definitely worth checking out and paying attention to anyways that is about it for this video here this is mr mario signing off thank you all for watching everyone if you enjoyed this video a like would absolutely be appreciated and if you didn't like it a dislike is fine as well too